Well, here we are another day at the Marley Farm after a real windy last couple days time to go start surveying all the damage look around see what's going on this is out the backyard got my boots on got my warmer clothes on because it went from really warm to pretty chilly a little bit of a breeze today I'll show you my morning procedure you're on a tripod so I'm kind of carrying that this is a goofy little red light it's LED and it goes down all the way down here I guess if you've seen other videos you know I heat with a homemade outdoor wood boiler that's down here working on a pulley right there I'm changing the RPMs on my sawmill I want to move it up from what I'm at now to 650 RPMs on a and I'm going to go from a 56 inch saw to a 54 inch saw so I'm gonna try putting that pulley on start working on that coming down here to the boiler got to check it when that red light up there goes on that means my boiler temperature is getting down and I know I gotta load wood here's a I guess a couple saw blades in there if you can see them couple spare saw blades I'm getting ready to clear all this out in the shed I'll show you in a little bit that I'm making here's what I call emergency wood there's eight totes crates there ICV totes loaded with wood that I cut last year and it's just covered up so it, it stays dry in case the weather gets so bad that I can't get uh, wood up here's kind of a plastic cover I'm gonna take that cover off in a minute because I don't think it's supposed to rain but here we are we're gonna check the boiler and here's more wood in the background let's see if I can get this tripod set down to where you can see what's going on here I think that's got it so we got to check the boiler got a good bed of coals in there I'll move them forward a little bit with a goofy tool that I made ah. I don't know if you can see that because I don't have anybody watch me but I'll just rake the coals forward a little bit in there and what I do this time of the year or not this time of the year what I do when I'm home today's uh, Saturday while I'm retired been retired for a half dozen years there that gets the coals in there I put cherry wood in there so if I'm outside it smells real nice around there I don't know if you can see the coals there's a bed of coals it's uh, around 12 o'clock now I'm not sure exactly what time it is but I loaded it last night at about 12 o'clock I generally go out it's it's burning pretty good it's nice and white in there um, I stoke it around midnight every night and then come out in the morning and when I'm home and be working outside which I will be today I put cherry cherry in there so it it's got a nice aroma around the house, so that's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm not going to show you me getting it because it's all the way over at the other end. Here we come. Didn't take too long to get it. And how I generally set the wood in, set one in on that side, set one in on that side, and then one up the top. That kind of acts like great so a lot of air will get around it. I don't want to over stoke it. If you over stoke it, it blows smoke up the stack. Anytime you put new wood in it, it blows smoke up the stack. So that's that. Now the next thing I got to do, I'll check the temperature. We come up here and let's see. You can zoom in on that. See the temperature is uh, I can't read it through the camera. It's 1 186. So that's that would there probably last 
I'm guessing three or four hours. It, it uh, although it's chilly, it's probably in the 30s right now. Oh, I'm going, getting out. I guess I'll show you how I wrap up my wrap up my wood coverage. That's plastic. It looks pretty rough. Looks kind of nasty, but it keeps the water off. And it it did rain the last few days, so I'll show you how I I put it up, get it out of the way. Hopefully I can get this water out of here. That's kind of a... That's got that done. I love these racks for getting wood. I find them, they're affordable. They're pretty tough. You put the edge down, you get the wood out easier. That's that's the rack, that's the old boiler. Whew. Oh man, wore out of breath already. Wore out. All right, I'm gonna take you on a tripod so I can set you down from time to time. Bear with me, I'm not good at video. That's the cherry wood. I have uh, three more of those ICB totes full of cherry. There's wood in the back left over from last year, emergency wood. And there's two uh, emergency woods way in the back there. I don't know if you can see them. That were uh, left over from last year. A little bit, of, a little bit of slab wood left on top. That's real dry. Then I generally walk out and take a look at the uh, greenhouse to make sure everything's going on all right out there. There's the Kubota. We'll be taking that out in a little while. Every morning I basically to wake up, kind of check things out. You know, look at the back of the boiler, make sure there's no leaks. It's kind of a overcast day today, but it's not not too bad. Come out here and. The other day, the eagle, where the eagle was, it had that deer in the video. It might have been the last video or two video ago. Was, this is where it got pulled out at. I do believe the deer was bedded down in here and then got pulled out to around here. And the, the movie was right there of, the, of uh, Mr. Eagle eating on that deer that's how close it is to the house it's probably only 50 foot from the house which i thought was kind of strange but there's still if you look down here there's some fur there's some fur over there now the next day he came back and the deer was dragged over there and then the next day mr eagle was out again and he was dragged to over here someplace and now I got no idea where that deer oh that looks like he's way over there if you can see way 
and let's see way over in the distance that's where it is now they they drag it I think a coyote got it or something now I always go in and check the greenhouse just a quick look and make sure everything's kind of okay there's not too much in there right now we're gonna start probably in another month of oh, the door kind of like an automatic door there isn't it there's wood drying here's a uh, something that's kind of interesting there's my pile of wood on a video that I had a year ago October that wood started out at 600 pounds and now it's down to 350, 350 even. It's been there since September, so I don't think it's going to lose any more weight. So I'll have to do the calculations on it later, make another movie maybe. In the back, back here, there was another movie where I was making slab wood, or taking slab wood and making, cutting it up into kindling. And there's a whole bunch of crates of kindling back there that if you got to make a fire, that, that starts it. The other is the other behind the scaled wood back here is what I call Cadillac wood. There's no bark on it. There's no sap wood. There's it's just perfectly clean wood, and it's been in the greenhouse now, so it's dry. If, if you drop two sticks together, they might light. Here's where the pipes come up. This is what I check. I redid all this, all this thing here. I had to dig the other one out. It had. Um, it was plastic and it decomposed with the sun in the greenhouse and was caving in and dirt was getting in there. So I redid that, but it, one of those PEX lines wants to leak at the shark bite joint. I had copper down there and I switched it because the copper was leaking. So then I put, uh, figure well, before I got the boiler going, I did that. But that, that heats a greenhouse. I think I, that coil there is about, uh, I guess it's about 150,000 BTUs, which keeps the greenhouse once I start putting flowers in it just fine. Now we'll walk up, we'll walk up front. I got a, we had a real bad uh, storm. I'm gonna try to move this camera around a little bit there because it's on a tripod. It's hard to get it to go on and off the tripod because the tripod's broke. Too cheap to buy another one. Everybody knows that if you're dealing with me, you're dealing with, you know, leftover things. This is a, a tripod that was thrown away I was a janitor and it was thrown away in the school that I was a janitor in because it's got a little broken piece on it well that broken piece makes it really aggravating to work to put the camera on it so I put the camera on to start with and then carry it around we're up to 13 minutes I don't want to go too much longer because I don't know how to take all the junk out you can fast forward this tree here died last year I don't even know what kind of tree it is, but I'm going to have to t take it down. If we tie the hammock to it or used to, you can see it kind of goes, goes up. Hear the woodpecker? I don't see him, but I hear him. Oh, there, there he is. He's just a little one. Anyhow, I'm going to try to take that tree down today because I got to get up here and take another tree down today that came uh, came apart in that storm that we had yesterday electricity went out yesterday daughter's electricity went out she couldn't get out of the garage she she knew how I told her how to neutralize the door so she could open up and get out of the garage but the springs weren't set good enough so the garage door wouldn't stay open once it went up to get out and she had to had a dentist appointment she had to go to so I had to go rescue her she's only as the crow flies a mile from me as the car drives probably five miles from me anyhow this is this is the mess I got to clean up it blew a uh, right good sized branch you see it blew the top out of that Let's see if I can get up there uh, uh, I, I don't know whether you can see that or not. I'm trying to look at it. Anyhow, that's that's where that that came from. And it's right good sized, right good sized limb that snapped off. I'm 
down and put my hand next to it. So I'll zoom in. Anyhow, that, that's probably about 10 inches, maybe give or take an inch. Why do they always have to fall out in the yard? You know, it's, it's just, I guess it's the way it has to be. But the good thing is I was looking for a tree, which is poplar. Now maybe you can get it, get it all the way up there. It's fairly tall. And it's probably 12 inches, maybe 13 inches there at the base. I'm going to cut that off and maybe one of the next videos will be sawing that up. I'm going to show you what I need it for. I'm going to take you off the tripod and walk down to the woods to show you what I need it for. Let's see. Undo that. There's a little piece that's busted on a tripod. And as you can see, there's a spring coming out of there. What happens when you try to use your thumb? There's supposed to be a little, I guess, lever on there to pull it out. You got to put your finger on the spring and pull it around. And it is a bear. Anyhow, we'll go back down around the house this way. There's the boom truck we go out and get logs with. It's kind of broke right now. Don't know exactly what's wrong with it. We thought we fixed it and didn't fix it blown over trash cans from the storm there's the dog's old house <laughs> going on through We're cutting through this way the Christmas tree I have to stand that back up if anybody wants to make something for bird feeders or for woodpeckers this is just that wire mesh stuff and fill it with the peanuts they empty that thing with peanuts. They get the ones all the way inside. It's about four inches around. They somehow get all the peanuts out of that thing in about a week. They go through, oh, $150 worth of peanuts in a winter. There's a bird feeder. That thing holds 40 pounds of bird food. Suet, they love it. Trying to catch squirrels. Sometimes I don't catch them, they catch a bullet. I'm gonna go feed the eagle him. The squirrels uh, around here are doing so much damage to the house to the sheds. They've uh, chewed up the wiring harness on that red car that was up there four times. Last time I had to have it towed, they chewed the wires up by the, down by the crank sensor, chewed them all up so the car wouldn't run. I had to have it towed out and repaired. <laughs> well, we took it down to that other guy's house, Jeffrey, that we have the uh, big wood splitter on. He's got a shop and uh, you had to take half the car in the front apart to get to that thing. That thing was really tight. Here's what I'm kind of building now. Or I guess I'm more than kind of building. We'll go down and show you that. Now a few few videos ago I saw some 2x6s. And the width on it really didn't make any difference. The height on it didn't make any difference. It just had to have one flat side. And that's this is why remember i'm a janitor i take anything and a scrapper these were the poles from one of those tin buildings somebody called me said the snow i guess it's been four or five years ago crushed it down and his two cars were underneath of it and wanted to wanted to know if i could come out and help him get it out so i helped him get his cars out from underneath of it which were crushed pretty bad too the insurance i guess took care of it and maybe the insurance bought him a new building but he wanted to know if I wanted it. Well, everything was messed up on it. But I took it. And I've had these, I've had these uh, supports around here for quite some time. So I decided if I take and put a bolt through it, cut two of those boards, put a bolt through it, I think that would make an all right, all right little shed to store some stuff in. I'm trying to clean out where those saw blades were, put it down here so I get a slab of cement put in there. 
so that's that's where I'm at now I gotta put the bottom row on and the back piece up here I made it a 2x8 because I might want to put a lean-to off and put some junk on the side once you get the basic building up lean-to's are pretty easy to to come off the side here's what it looks like up top I'm climbing the ladder so I've already got the tin for it I bought it last year when I got the tin for the number one sawmill building there's the house you can see up there now the the boilers throwing a little bit of smoke because I put those new pieces of wood in here here's the I'll look around the woods see that tree there that one came down that'll be a, be a video it's stuck up in there that blew down at the last windstorm I, I don't know why mother nature doesn't blow down the dead trees it only blows down the the healthier healthier trees I don't I think that's an oak maybe red or black oak I'm not quite sure but uh, I'll have to pull that down there's some more I don't know if I can zoom in on that I'll let me get off the ladder here because I'm not I'm shaky when I'm not on a ladder there's some more that I got clean up from that's all storm damage there were uh, one, two, three, three or four big trees come down there. They're all ash. They good firewood. Here's a little, that's probably the only cherry we got. I wish I had some of that cherry Mike Morgan had. That's some beautiful wood he's got up there. That's a look. There's, there's a creek that goes down the bottom down there. Anyhow, we're up to 22 minutes, so I'm going to call it quits on this movie and get to doing all the things I just showed you I got to do today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.